Hey Internet, I'm Chaz. And I'm Dan, and welcome to the most affordable episode of Why the Serious Business we have That's done perfect. and will probably yeah. ever do. Yeah, I didn't even know how to start this episode. Like, where do we even go? Like, I've never... So, let's just start this out. These are probably the cheapest wines that you can find on the market. Um, I don't know where to go from there. They're considered bum wine, and I've never had them before, and you've never had them before. I've never had them before. So we're putting our money where our mouth is. We say you got to go out and drink wine. you got to expand your palate. Yep. you got to learn what you like, and you got to learn what you don't like to guide you in your purchases and to guide you toward wines you can truly appreciate when you get there. So who knows? We might love these at three bucks. They don't have to be very good to be, to be considered a buy as That's far true. as I'm concerned. Right, from a QPR standpoint. Yeah, like the, it's entirely possible. It's got to be tolerable. Let's put it that way. So That's these, all I'm looking these, for here. these are going to be popping pours, right? They're, they're fresh on the yeah. jar. We've got some appropriate glassware to give them a shot. Are we going to start with the white? I think we probably should. Okay. All right. We'd hate to ruin our palates. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> That's funny. All right. So both of these wines I, I've read are produced by the Gallo Brothers out of California. A, a big, large-scale production. You, you see, you see, jug wine. It's supermarket, supermarket wine. They make a ton of stuff. I heard a quote uh, a few decades ago. One of one of the brothers was like, "We want to be the Campbell's soup of wine. We want to be everywhere, large quantities, wine for everybody." And in some ways, there's they something are. to be good. There's something good to be said about that, right? You want to make wine for everybody. That's available to everybody. That's affordable by everybody. The risk you run, of course, when you go to mass quantity, the quality can suffer. Yeah. And uh, they don't even put their name on this bottle. These are made by Night Train Express Limited and yeah, uh, Thunderbird Limited, respectively. We got so far into it, we actually didn't even tell you what the fuck they were. So, this is Night Train, or Thunderbird, the American classic. Wine number one. Yeah. Uh, citrus wine with natural flavors and caramel color. Are you ready for this? Three bucks. Yeah. Smells like Zima. Wow, a little bit of heat on the nose. But yeah. less than I was expecting, I'll be fair. It smells like Zima. <laughs> citrus, it's there. Artificial citrus. Air uh, fresher it, citrus? It, it's, it's just like when you make a screwdriver, you're drunk, and you make a screwdriver 50 50. Half really cheap orange juice, and half really, like, you know, 80 proof vodka. Yeah. I'm right with you. Screwdriver. Yeah. It smells like a screwdriver. Without any pulp. You don't even need to deal with the pulp. Look at how clean this is. You can see right through. See that? You can see Chaz right through the bottom. It's beautiful. All right. Let's see try this out. Citrus and sugar right on the front end. Uh, citrus and sugar all the way through with uh, sugar. With distinct heat. It's hot. Yeah. However, much less hot than pure alcohol. Again, we're talking, you know, that it almost turns a little uh, like uh, brown sugary on the finish. Actually, like the, the sugar is really bright. It's definitely like you just stuck white sugar in your mouth, and then as you swallow it, and it's sitting there on the sides of your tongue, maybe a little brown. I'm I'm totally with you on that. Little little like. Uh, yeah, it carries on for a while. You know, the finish. finish is pleasant. I'll it's totally pleasant. give it that. Yeah. Very late on the finish, there is some nice caramel sweet notes. They said there are car there's caramel coloring. I'm willing to bet that, that uh, those enjoyable caramel flavors are entirely artificial. No, but, the, the, but whatever. But the start in the mid is horrible. God, it's so hot. And I'm sure if I was a bum, I would be totally into this because it's sweet and you can tell it's got a lot of alcohol and you're going to get wasted on one bottle. Zima all over the nose, I think. Yeah, totally. It totally, totally smells like Zima with like orange uh, Jolly Ranchers. Like when you were in high school and to get past the smell of the Zima, you stuck the like watermelon and apple and lemon Jolly Ranchers that in it. That sounds horrible. You did that? Yeah. Didn't you? You didn't do that? I didn't drink in high school. No, I drank a lot of Zima in high school with bitches. And uh, they, they uh, <laughs> you, you know. put that on the show? Why not? All right. <laughs> Is that all right? Uh, yeah, it's fine with me. I mean, you okay? Some of those bitches might be watching. No, it's fine. <laughs> They're not watching. No, it's right. gone. Okay, so anyway, it's it's definitely candy, easy, but really hot alcohol. I mean, yeah, it's, I don't know where even know where to go with it. It's it's so weird. It just 
it's a lie to call this wine. That's, That's true. <laughs> I, don't, I don't. Yeah, I don't even know. I'm like trying to rate it. I'm trying to like put it in the context of other white wines that I've had. Malt liquor. I'm having a hard time with that. I would. I would. I would believe you if you told me this was like 15 percent malt yeah. liquor as opposed to wine. So. Try not to. Do you actually want to get the dump bucket for this? No? You're you're gonna 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 kill it? Okay. Seriously. All right. I mean, I'm going to okay. say 65 points. 60, I'll go 60 points. Ugh. It's not good. If you want to get wasted, sure. Not bad. But I, could, I would rather Man. spend $3 on a bottle of Charles Shaw than this. Hands <laughs> down. Actually, that, that, yeah. that settles it. Yeah, the booze hangs around actually it does. too. And, and as I get more, and God, I mean, it says drink this ice cold. This. God forbid what this does up every bit. Don't be a baby. Seriously, we're, we're doing the Thunderbird episode. Just drink the Thunderbird. Okay. And then I try to clear it up. I'll pour you a good rinse. You know, back when I was in high school. We used to drink this stuff called Mad Dog 2020 Lightning Creek. It was the white one. It was like the, uh, the nice. citrus. And this reminds me a lot of it. Which one would you prefer? Forced to choose? This, this actually. Because ah. the problem with the Lightning Creek was that it was it would make you gag after each swallow. So you oh drank as God. much. You would plug your nose and drink as much as possible before you would have to stop and then, you know, almost throw up. And so this is better than that. But it's got that flavor. Like every time I, I bring it up to my mouth, I'm actually getting... A little, it's coming up. Oh. And, you know what? And I would say I've totally had worse wine. Not many, but they're out there. Have you had wine that you would consider worse than this? Not corked, of course. Like Lightning Creek. Bad Dog 2020 Lightning Creek. But not, no. Actually, I've had plenty of cork wine that I've in the last drink. In the last 10 years, no. I haven't had anything I would rather. Even cork wines. I've had horrible cork wines. Like cork wines that have been seepers for years and they taste like total garbage. I think I like it a little more than you, so I'm going to go with 63 points. Really, once you get below... Actually, the, no, I... Yeah. Once, you, once you get below the upper 60s, I really have no idea. You know, that, that, that like, the dark abyss of, like, 50 to 65, 66 points. It's all a horrible place to be. I'm, I'm going to go with 63. I'm 60. As a benchmark, I guess. And from here on out, if I ever rate something worse than 63, remember, I think it's worse than Thunderbird. 